Episode 61, Battle Angel Alita Movie Review. Welcome to the Visionary Variety Podcast, where we cover cool stuff like photo, video, film, books, and technology. So switch on your brain and enjoy the show. I'm here with Nate. Hey, hey. In his car. <laughs> and we're recording. We just got out of the movie theater, so... We're borrowing a little play out of the book from one of our favorite podcasts, the Strangers and Aliens podcast, and we're recording fresh out of the movie theater. So that was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was really good. How did you feel about the movie, Nate? Emotional. Very (laughs) emotional. Feelings. For a sci-fi movie, there was a lot of heartfelt moments. Yeah, with a movie full of robots. Very emotional. (laughs) Yeah. It was trying to keep it spoiler-free. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to see it again. I couldn't decide if I wanted to focus on the center of the screen or the background because both parts were equally beautiful and interesting, (laughs) honestly. I was looking for Easter eggs. Yeah, I was was looking for Pauline in the background. (laughs) Yeah. And I was enjoying just all the detail put into this movie. Very, very well done. Very well thought out. Um, It was a very gripping movie. I felt myself tensing multiple times on the edge of my seat, kind Mm -hmm. of. Especially the the rollerball scene. <laughs> so, yeah, great story. Uh, some good twists and deeper levels to the characters. Yeah. You know, they weren't, like, one-dimensional, no. right? Yeah. Yeah, so for Alita, she was very more human, not so much robot. Mm-hmm. And so it was given a lot of, like, a human perspective of, like, new life and not knowing who she was. Yeah, it's funny. This is the second movie with a female lead that doesn't know who she is in the month. Because <laughs> <laughs> we had... We had Captain Marvel. She didn't know who she was. She had no. superpowers from kind of, not alien, but you know. Yeah, a big boom. Out of this world and Alita, <laughs> same thing. It's kind of strange. Yeah. I don't know why there's movies that come out with the same plot twice, but you know, it happens. But anyway. Yeah, for two hours of a movie, there was a heck of a lot of character building. Yeah. I, I feel like it was a little rushed sometimes. It was just kind yeah. of jumping. Yeah. But you know, you have to do it in a Well, movie. I mean, for two hours, you kind of have to assume yeah, exactly. some parts. Yeah, this isn't Avengers Endgame, so. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we're for a three-hour movie we're ready for, not. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that's as much as we can say without spoiling it. So let's get to the actual interview with Paulina, who had played one of the extras in the bar scene. Welcome to the podcast. Today, we're going to be reviewing the new movie, Battle Angel Alita, and we've got a special guest with us today. Actually, two special guests with us <laughs> on the show. We've got returning guest, Abby Leon. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? And also returning guest, Paulina Manso. Hi. <laughs> So in this episode, we're going to obviously be talking about the movie, but we're going to have some really great inside information from Paulina because she was uh, one of the hunter warriors in the movie. Uh, Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this discussion and uh, hearing about your experience. What is it like being on set and being part of a blockbuster film? Um, And whether or not you were in the almighty presence of James Cameron. (laughs) (laughs) More on that later. So to any listeners out there that are new, which I'm sure this is the first episode for quite a few people out there. I've got a lot of new subscribers, a lot of new fans finding us and discovering us this just this past week. So we do this podcast every week and we talk about a range of seemingly random subjects. Uh, you'll see some photography education episodes. You'll see some funny episodes about nerdy news and just random stuff going online. And also we do movie reviews and other things like that. So a lot of variety. That's the name of the game for this episode, for this podcast. And uh, like I said last time, we may in the future split it up. But for now, I'm fine with just having a bunch of nerdy, geeky stuff on this podcast. And uh, we like it that way. So on the show with us today is myself, Daniel Grove. I'm a local photographer in San Antonio who is known for my super geeky cosplay and special effects work and other things, too. Uh, We've also got with us Nate Gunn. Hey, hey. Nate, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so I'm local here in San Antonio. I'm a full-time videographer, a part-time human. And on top of all that, I enjoy being a total geek, total nerd, and all that fun stuff. Woo! Is there any other way to be, really? (laughs) All right, Abby, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, everybody out there. My name is Abby. I'm a production director here at a local church and been doing video for the better part of a decade, actually 10 years now. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. And last but not least, Paulina, who are you and why are you here? (laughs) (laughs) Hello. I am an actor, director, screenwriter, um, and I am here to talk about 
Bottle Angel Alita. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes. Yay. laughs> Ever since you told me you were in this movie, I knew we had to do an episode with you. <laughs> yeah. now, again, to the new listeners, there is an episode all about Paulina. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> kind of an interview episode, which is another thing we like to do, is interview creative people that are doing cool stuff out there. And uh, yeah. in that episode, we talk all about her filmmaking, her script writing, and all the other creative things she does. Mm-hmm. Um, so go check that out when you have time after this one. Um, all right, so... Let's start with um, your experience, Paulina, getting involved in this movie. So my first question is, how the heck do you get this job on a Hollywood movie? Like, How, how did this come about? So there is a few casting agencies um, in within the Austin, San Antonio, more Austin uh, than anything. And they mainly cast extras. Um, so one time they put out a, a notice and it had like a different code. Sometimes they use code names for especially big productions like these. so cool, so so mysterious. Yeah. (laughs) I guess, I I don't know why, I guess to keep the masses away from... Well, that's like like when someone posts on Facebook, I'm looking for a photographer, like a billion people comment, and it just gets crazy. If someone said there was a James Cameron movie coming out and they want extras, oh my gosh, can you imagine? I mean, it happened with this onset of uh, The Walking, I Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, man. I remember. I that. mean, they try Thousands. to keep that on the wraps <laughs> so bad, and I was I worked a few days on that, and like on one of the days there was like a hot air balloon just circling what? around the set because they wanted to see and like, and we're like really like really. Wait, who who was in the hot air balloon? I'm confused. <laughs> it was just probably fans, I think. Yeah, oh just fans just trying to get like a. Yeah, it's so extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get like pictures of the mm. set and like oh, what it looked like. Oh, I like. see. Like, yeah. like, like the people that yeah. sent the drone over the episode Star Wars Episode Seven set and they got pictures of it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> they leaked it out earlier. Yep. <laughs> was that Fear the Walking Dead? Was that the one they filmed in New Braunfels on the river? I know they're filming uh, right now. There's uh, the this season coming up, but uh, I think it was a year before yeah. it filmed in Round Rock. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because um, I remember seeing yeah. the stadium. Mm-hmm. In the in the yeah that's that's where, that's where I was yeah okay okay sorry C- continue <laughs> <laughs> casting online <laughs> so yeah so I submitted for it and they called me in and it's like okay we're gonna do a fitting and like they just told me you're gonna be like a like a citizen of like this you know futuristic industrial it's like just bring you know different stuff. Uh, so I just brought whatever I could find that could look futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, they pick some, they pick stuff for you. And then, mm. uh, once you show up on set, it can change with, if that was my case, yeah. <laughs> um, the outfit that I, that I, they had picked out for me, it changed to something else. Um, and it could be for a variety of reasons. Mm. So. Yeah, so that was really cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> so how long did it take? Like, how long were you working? You know, you, you have a very short spot in the movie. Uh, it's an awesome yes. scene, probably my favorite, uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> but, um, I mean, how long were you on set and how long did it all take? My goodness. It's, uh, that scene, which is the bar scene, mm-hmm. um, that took probably like five days to film. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, they were probably like, hmm. There were more stunts in that scene than there were extras. Uh, and it was just because of the how involved it was. Um, and it was being filmed in 3D. So there was a lot of components to it that mm-hmm. had to be carefully choreographed. Not not only the stunts, but the yeah. set, um, the actors, you know, the, uh, all that motion capture that they did, yeah. you know, with the suits and everything. So it was... It was definitely very interesting to see because it was a brand new experience for me. I mean, I've been on sets before, but I've never seen a, a 3D mm-hmm. being filmed. It was crazy. Yeah, a lot of the characters in that bar scene, the, the, I mean, it's all hunter warriors. It's, it's, it's just, I guess that's just mm-hmm. like the hunter warrior hangout spot at night. Um, <laughs> yeah. Even though they're like competitors, I don't know how they don't kill each other. But <laughs> <laughs> um, So they're all just hanging out. And most of these characters have, you know, um, cybernetic uh, body parts, you know, that are not human anymore. What did you see before the special effects were applied? What did it look like? All, uh, gray sleeves. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so when I showed up on set that day, uh, the first day, actually, um, the production told me to walk over to where Weta was. To be honest, I had no idea what Weta was. (laughs) (laughs) 
and they're like they're like you don't know what weta is and i'm like no and it's like <laughs> oh my god like the the guy that was like telling me where to go was like oh my god and i'm like i i have I can't no even. idea i can't even Albi, could you could you mansplain for us what weta is <laughs> I, I don't know if it's mansplaining it's nerdsplaining <laughs> there you go. it's a, it's nerdsplaining <laughs> nerdsplaining yeah they're they're the new ilm i guess they're the new yeah. They're the magic makers now. They have uh, their portfolios on Vimeo. But um, I'm a huge fan of what it, I'm actually, yeah. I follow them on Instagram and they post behind the scenes photos mm-hmm. of all the just wild things they've done throughout cinema history. Yeah. Uh, but they're responsible for a lot of major special effects in movies that, you know, we've all heard of. Yeah. Um, and they, they can do almost anything. And there's other companies too that specialize mm-hmm. in different things. Yeah. I think but, uh, um, what is awesome. Marvel and Disney, when they're doing all their stuff, they typically use ILM. But when they mm-hmm. were doing the Star Wars stuff, they were falling behind on some stuff. And the only people they could rely on was Weta. So they hey, sent, they, yeah, they sent, they sent stuff over to Weta. So they, they well, had like an area, that- they had like a tent or something. Uh, they did. So um, after I got, set up with my wardrobe uh they're like go to weta and i'm like what would what? you call me it's like and like mm. they put me in a van and they drove me to where weta was like i was like the only one and i was like what the hell is going on um why are you blindfolding so me I, yeah i'm like so mysterious uh so i finally get to um the set, like the actual set, and they had a mm-hmm. little area, yeah. Uh, and there was a guy on a computer. And <laughs> There's one guy. Like, sit down. And, yeah, it's like, sit down over there. So I sit down, and they put a, a gray sleeve on one of my arms. <laughs> um, it had Super sensors cool. on it, and um, they're like, what's your name? And I'm like, Paulina. And they put it into the computer. It's like, and it's like almost like they're logging you in. They're, they match whatever sleeve you have in the yeah. sensors, they match it up so they can track mm-hmm. you like they they knew exactly where you were <laughs> at all times so cool. um so the sleeve was coded to you yes cool yeah. i wonder if they had any kind of real-time rendering for the prosthetic stuff uh yeah they did <laughs> Oh, really? because that that's what i was uh, yeah. that's i just put two and two together whenever i've seen the mocap suits so i'm used to the old mocap suits with the little Dooley balls and everything like that. Ping yeah, uh, but the new one, the new ones are very like like they're not even the same from person to person. So I would presume that that's what matches. You know, whenever that uh, whenever that code scans in the computer, they're oh that's Mark Ruffalo or that's uh, mm-hmm. whatever uh, Paulina. <laughs> so that's yeah. neat. That's Did it have cool. like a bunch but of designs or was it just plain gray? It was just plain gray. It's like a mesh like type mm-hmm. of mesh sleeve and then it had little sensors on it i'm just sad that they changed their mind on that because you did end up getting a robot arm i didn't yeah. um and i think it was because it, i was covered yeah i was behind people right. so i guess it wasn't needed yeah but i did do um uh i guess you know it's just the way the scene is cut but like i did have some scenes where i was walking from across the room mm-hmm. um just things like that so um Maybe in in that I would have been seen, yeah. but, but not on where I ended up. Yeah. Uh, well, they're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So where was uh, the filming actually done? So Battle Angel Alita was filmed in Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. That's so um, cool. Yeah, at the Troublemaker Studios. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, those that's Robert Rodriguez's it's the old um, airport, right? Yeah. There, <laughs> there's an there's an airplane when you enter the. Mm-hmm. So that's the how set. they have all the yeah. room for those sets. Yeah, <laughs> I drive by there all the time. Mm-hmm. Like. One day I'm just gonna walk in there. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, I probably. Yeah, I probably go in there, start make a fake badge, just start flashing your badge around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, I have uh, other than you, I know some other actors that uh, are local from San Antonio and Austin that were in the film. Do you have any other friends that you know you already knew before the project that were on the movie as well? So I met um, Elle Lamont. Mm-hmm. Uh, she played um, Screw. Screwhead. Yes, yeah, Screwhead. A uh, huge role for her. Yeah, um, big. There's a few. Yeah, there's a few people that I already knew. Uh, JT Campos was one of the stunts. Uh, he is. Uh, he plays one of the cartel people in um, Queen of the South. She also has a very large role. Right. So yeah, there's there were a few friends there mm-hmm. that I knew. Yeah. Earlier, I alluded to this, but did you meet and or see James Cameron? 
I did not see James Ugh, Cameron, unfortunately. Really yeah, he was, okay. yeah, he was <laughs> not there. But um, I did see Robert Rodriguez cool. plenty of times. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, and Christoph Waltz, um, who you know is one of the key characters. Mm -hmm. um, I remember we 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 went to a lunch. This is a little insider uh, <laughs> on lunch uh, for how it works. So usually if you're a background extra, they you get there's a special tent for the extras mm -hmm. and the food is different <laughs> from the crew and the cast. But when it's a, when it's a, a scene where there's not a lot, a lot of extras, you get lumped in with the you hey, know, hey, whatever hey. the crew eats. And that's the, some good, good food. So, yeah. so <laughs> what did you eat? <laughs> uh, they had a lot of very strange, um, yeah, like uh, like kale chips. And so Austin, like, that's Austin right there. <laughs> so very Austin. They had matcha tea. Uh -huh. uh, I'm like, I, I don't know what this is, but I'm, I guess I'm going to eat it. Um, in the morning, they had like uh, breakfast. They had like make your own smoothie. Like they oh had my like, gosh. Food, like a... It's yeah, hilarious. like juice your own stuff. <laughs> was there avocado toast? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was. I mean, it was very like like local food, mm -hmm. very Austin. Yeah, that's cool. But uh, yeah, I remember like uh, like we were all you know lunching, and uh, like right behind me was Christoph Waltz having lunch. Nice. Uh, Ed Ed Scrain, but he was like joking around with you know the crew and like, and I'm thinking, what what. What's going on with my life? Like this is so weird. Is this real but, life? Like, is this real life? But like, they're just actors, you yeah, know. They're people. they're people like the rest of us, you know. Yep. So, but I thought that was really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, Jennifer Connelly was there uh, briefly. Oh. She is just absolutely go gorgeous. Yeah, she is. <laughs> yeah, she's she's perfect. There is, Meh. there that Meh. Woman is perfect. <laughs> Not obvious type of woman. Man. <laughs> Well, Polina, I am really looking forward to doing some kind of Battle Angel Alita photo shoot with you. I am just imagining something epic. <laughs> so yeah. you need to get that costume back together, whatever you wore for the movie or something like it. And we're going to do something awesome. Yeah, that's going to be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and you can you can say that you are doing a photo shoot of the character that you played in a movie. How cool is that? I'm, I'm cosplaying myself. Yeah, you are. That's super cool. that's, oh, who are you? Well, cool. I'm, you know, the character that I played. You know, it's me. That's <laughs> No biggie. <laughs> All right, well, let's get on to the movie review section of this episode. Um, and we will give a spoiler warning in a little bit. But before we get to the spoiler section... Uh, let's do some ratings. So how do you, each of you guys rate this movie on a scale of zero to five robot arms? How many robot arms do you give this film? I'll give it a solid three and a half. However, oh. however, after, <laughs> after I did like my research, I'm like, I don't get it. I don't, I want to know more, but I was intrigued. I was hooked. I, I'd probably give it four and a quarter at least. So, so four robot arms, and then the the other arm is like from the shoulder down to like the top. Yeah, of the, the, the the yeah exactly so the nub in <laughs> robot nub, a robot nub, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing that attaches the robot arm. Squirt out some blue juice. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I, I, right. I'm really excited for where it's going. I did some research on the backstory on my way to Austin. I just listened to a whole bunch of podcasts about it, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I see where this is going. That's pretty smart. It was almost like the 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 marketing did it a disservice, I think. But hmm. if the marketing would have did a little bit better job on the front end, I think that we would have been yeah. would have gone in with a stronger with a stronger rating. Nate, how about you? A lot like Abby, uh, probably four. Um, not knowing much about it going in and then coming out and be like, oh, dude, I want a sequel. So yeah, I'd give it a solid totally. four, four and a half. Yeah, I'm I'm doing four. I'm doing four robot arms too. No nub. We'll get it. No, no, no nub. nubs. No, no blue juicy squirting nubs. Uh, all right, uh, Paulina, how about you? Uh, I'm gonna give it a four too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a four. Um, I liked it. I thought it was enjoyable. Um, I will say it's not the type of movie that I usually go see okay. or what I'm drawn to. Yeah. Um, maybe because I'm a filmmaker and I'm just drawn to artsy, mm. artsy fartsy stuff. Um, and this is more. This is definitely a movie for the masses. Um, you know, what people, you know, what the bulk of the population, you know, enjoys. 
the kids these days <laughs> with all their robots. Um, but I I do think that they're going in the right direction. I think they it's it's um I wouldn't say that it's groundbreaking, mm. but it's one of those movies that is you know filmed in 3D, all that CGI, um, the motion capture that they use. I mean, because the lead actress, she does not look like that at all, you know? So, <laughs> My goodness. <Woo-hoo>. Uh, <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> a lot of makeup. <laughs> but, yeah. But um, I don't know how to explain it because um, it's so realistic um, that it's almost like any, any actor, like as long as the actor is good, you can look however you can yeah. you they want you to look like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so um it's almost like a new way of like i am just seeing this from the filmmaker perspective mm-hmm. but it's almost like a new way of like just finding actors like the right look is now not needed yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you, i'll make it for the, you <laughs> the bridge of your nose is not wide enough or your, your chin isn't as chiseled so we're just gonna fix that in post <laughs> or you're gonna be 70 years old and we'll make you look young can i give you some yeah apps? right <laughs> Well, uh, I think this is the spoiler warning here. So from henceforth, thou hast been warned. Spoilers. All right. So first question is, I like to talk about the experience during the movie. Like what was going through y'all's heads, um, you know, as this wild story unfolds and as this huge world is just kind of, Un- unveiled to us because I mean a large population of America did not know what Alita was like only I feel like only more classic anime fans will know about it because mm-hmm. Alita is an older manga I mean um, I remember seeing it when I was in middle school you know early 2000s it was already a little bit dated at the time like it was I think it was 80s and 90s most maybe it was 90s um, yeah mm. yeah 90s early 90s so, into into yeah because it came out over the course of nine years mm-hmm and, you know, most people my age, they got into anime in the early 2000s when they were in junior high, you know, give or take a few years. So this mm-hmm. is uh, not a super popular anime, um, not anymore at least. But uh, and to all those extreme Alita fans out there, I'm sorry, I probably just ticked you off, but <laughs> just being honest, you know. Um, so this movie was totally new. And uh, like you, Abby, a lot of people didn't know the backstory and had lots of questions coming out of the theater probably. So my first question here is, what were you guys thinking during this movie? First thing I thought was like, wow, they really ripped off Elysium, didn't they? Because I didn't know anything. <laughs> yes. Because I didn't know anything. And, and it, you know, and <laughs> it like turns that. out uh, Elysium ripped off of them, you know. And, oh, snap. Uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, post-movie research, I, was, I found out all these other things that just kind of flipped my lid. I'm like, oh, Wow. So yeah, that's 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 kind of what I thought. It's just like, oh yeah, they yeah. live up there, the rich people and caste system. Classic, <laughs> yeah, the classic caste system trope, which is not yeah. a bad trope, but it is a trope. Uh, Paulina, since this is not really your, you know, um, cup of tea, um, the the ultra sci fi stuff. What what about you? What were you feeling during the story and the twists and all that stuff? Well, I enjoyed like uh, just the way it was presented. Um, because I really, I really felt like I was there. Yeah. Um, it almost felt like a point of view. Yeah. Like the the as an audience member, it almost feels like a point of view. So it was just really cool to see that because it felt like I was there. Mm. And very immersive. I was. <laughs> the the sets were really good and the atmosphere was very you know believable. Yeah. So um, I I mean I I enjoy that aspect of it. Um, I did see a lot of. Um, just your uh, typical recurring themes mm-hmm. of what you see. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm sure we'll get into. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Uh, Nate, how about you? I was thinking down the movie that like, man, where are they going to go with this story? They could have ended it right at the end. Weird enough, the last couple times I've gone to see newer movies, I just try and one, not to see all the trailers and two, go in with open mind and not overthink yeah. stuff and just uh, absorb what I'm viewing. That's why I'm there. It's just more enjoyable that way. Yeah, I agree. You, you can't, you can't spend too much time reading all the crazy, nasty people out there just hating on movies before they even come out. I don't understand that, and it's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, like people chill out. I, I there's think a woman actor. It's I think it's the sensationalism. <laughs> everybody's everybody's yeah. trying to catch onto that clickbaity video yes. and everything like that. So and, over that, yeah, and it's it's it. People are catching on. It's like okay, you. I, there's this channel that I had to unfollow because 
they're like throwing spaghetti up against the uh, the wall, just throwing every type of theory for yeah. one, one of the upcoming Marvel movies. And it's like, you're just oh, saying man. everything. It's like, <laughs> just yeah. so that you can say was, later on, I was right, see? Yeah. It's just, yeah, it was one like of my that for Captain Same. Marvel. Dude, I, there were so many reviews coming out before the movie was released. I'm like, really, y'all? So I was just like yeah. unfollowing and like, nope, can't do this with y'all. Yeah. It was the same thing with Game of Thrones. Oh, really? It's like, yeah. I keep reading every single, like, the- theory. possible outcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, aha, one of my 10 theories in my video is correct. So I'm correct. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, we got it right. It, it really is just very clickbaity. I don't. Totally over that part of this, yeah. this recent entertainment culture thing that's going on. It's very annoying. For myself, uh, during the movie, I was. Um, I guess when the movie first opened up and showed the floating city, did not expect that. Showed the the year twenty five hundred something or twenty six. What was it? It was twenty five hundred. Yeah, it was twenty five hundred something. Uh, that that kind of blew my mind. I knew it was in the future, but I didn't know like that, that much. Um, so I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, it's like the the uh-huh. the world was being kind of laid out in front of you real quick. Um, so that was a really cool, just kind of brain stretching moment there. Um, just kind of connecting with a digital actor, uh, connecting with a digital character, you know, it was interesting. Um, I did kind of get that uncanny valley feeling, which refers to like, you're looking at something that is obviously faked. So you, you can tell there's something off. You can tell it's CGI. And, and I was having that throughout. You know, when I watched Captain Marvel and I saw um, younger Samuel Jackson, I stopped thinking about the fact that he was de-aged. Like, it was that good. Yeah. Um, but uh, Alita's face... Um, uh, just I, I kept thinking about it a little too much. <laughs> now it's probably because yeah. it looks like an anime face. It's not a natural human, you know, anatomical proportions. So maybe that was what it was. But uh, just some things about it um, kind of threw me for a loop. So, uh, but I was getting over that and relearning what it's like to connect with a completely digitized character was interesting in the in a real setting. Um, so that was fun and uh, caught myself physically like flexing my butt cheeks. Because the action scenes <laughs> were so intense. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like trying to keep myself from falling off the edge of my, my theater seat, uh, especially during the rollerball <laughs> scenes and a few other scenes. I was like, I feel like I was there, you know, I was immersed mm-hmm. in the wide angle shots and the, the quick cuts and the action never left and right. It was just like, whoa. So, yeah, maybe a little TMI there. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. I'm still trying to picture that. <laughs> oh no don't don't picture that <laughs> okay let's talk about the characters uh the relations between alita and uh dr ito and things like that did you guys feel like the characters were good were they thin were they you know multifaceted what do y'all think about them i personally felt like the i mean well they f- they focus on alita mm. um but i would have like to see more on Jennifer Connelly's character a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like I, there wasn't much there, and and she was a like an important character. Yeah, but there wasn't a lot of development of her. Right. Yeah. Mm. I would have. I would have liked to see more on on her side of you know what happened, and you know the daughter, and like yeah. all of that, all mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. I feel like Alita and Dr. Ito were um, were deeper characters than um, than you often see in sci-fi. And mm-hmm. especially for a female lead. So, and I think we're kind of getting out of that uh, that trap of, you know, 80s, 90s female characters being very one-sided. But I, I like that Alita actually had different dimensions to her. And she progresses through that hero's arc. You know, she's changing. And she's finding mm-hmm. her identity, finding a purpose, and finding, you know, the tools to do whatever this thing is she wants to do. Uh, which in this case is a new body <laughs> um, and, <laughs> yeah. and discovering, you know, the truth. There's always like that cover up thing, you know, kind of like in Marvel, there's that, like you, you're presented with, with the truth, but then you realize the truth is not true. And everything you've learned in the movie is, is flipped upside down. So we kind of have that here too. Um, Cause there's lies and there's um, that caste system, you know, is like inescapable. Um, so I, I like that Alita changes and Ido too. You kind of see, like he's doing stuff that seems out of character, but then you realize, oh, he's he's doing this for good. Like he's saving people from getting hacked up and you know taken away. Um, whereas at first it almost looks like he's the one killing people. That was kind of a fun little twist there in the alley. But um, yeah, I, I think they did a good job giving her a dimension and um, you know a believable uh, character. They could have, you know, surely they could have done better in certain areas, but I enjoyed Alita and Ido too. From what I gathered. Uh, 
everybody was very well cast. Um, yeah. Like, um, I just kept hearing a whole lot of people talking about how good Rosa Salazar was for the part and how good um, uh, Christopher Waltz, how much he looks almost exactly like uh, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Ito. And the uh, uh, yeah, the manga version. So that <laughs> because something that's different about that manga specifically is and when they were creating it from again from the research that I did is that they were trying to open up manga to the West uh, with Alita because uh, typically manga you see a lot of uh, caricatured uh, Asian people, uh, but in this one it's not. It's it's. It's uh, several different ethnicities within the within that world, and that's what they, and they strived to do that. So um, right off the bat, it, it was it was very. I thought it was interesting because I'm thinking, okay, isn't this supposed to be manga? But the manga actually originally is supposed to be very inclusive uh, huh. as far as ethnicities from from around the world because this is supposed to be a future Earth, not a future Japan or a future. So Ido is not Asian in correct. the manga. Yes, okay. correct. Um, I really liked Rosa Salazar's voice. <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> Just, I don't know. It's, I it. it's, it's really raspy. Yeah. Raspy it's, it's youthful. Yeah. It's youthful, interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who played Nova? Um, do we want to say that already? I will. Yeah, I guess. We could yeah, just, well, this is not just spoilers. Uh, yeah, Ed Norton? Yeah, Ed so Ed, Ed Norton totally took me by surprise as Nova. I don't know why. I just thought that was yeah, so funny. Yeah, at the, like, at the end him. it was weird. I'm like, I'm like, expecting what? him to turn into a big green monster all of a sudden. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> or have multiple personality disorder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was an interesting casting. Uh, hopefully we actually get to see some more of him in the next movie. There better be yeah. a sequel. I, if that wasn't a setup for a sequel, I don't know what is. It, it was really... <laughs> just like you have to make one <laughs> from what i understood is james cameron has dedicated a, a trilogy to this that's Good. that's from what mm-hmm. i've read it's like he like this will be a trilogy this is a movie Good. for that's what i read too I'm, that's why he took so long because he wanted to do it just like avatar he wanted to do in the 90s he wanted to do an adaptation of this movie in the 2000s yeah. but technology was not a, was not up to par so yeah i'm glad you brought that up because when he was making titanic he wanted to do alita but it, he knew he couldn't. So I'm glad he uh, he did this. You know, I feel like this is kind of like a big homage to the underdog in entertainment. It's mangas. They don't often get movies made. And mangas itself are kind of a subset of what anime entertainment is today. Whereas, you know, I feel like originally it was, you know, almost all of anime entertainment was mostly mangas. That was like yeah. the main form. But then cartoons just really exploded. And then we've got cartoons everywhere. I literally can't watch <laughs> anime because there's just too freaking many of them. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, so I'm glad that he, I, I'm glad that he's something different for once. It's, it's yeah. a movie made about a manga and apparently it looks like a pretty decent adaptation. I would say that nine out of the 10 reviews that I saw post movie were all super excited and favorable. Like they, they were so happy That's that somebody good. finally got it right is what I kept hearing. Yeah. That was the recurring yeah. statement I kept hearing. Just somebody yeah. finally got manga right. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. okay, wow. All right. So I'm excited about this then. Yeah, I like when, you know, I'm not familiar with every single franchise, but when I do read someone that it's like is a super fan of that franchise and they say they did a good job, I'm like, oh, I'm happy for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I've had I've had my franchises, you know, pooped all over, like Dragon Ball, a movie. Oh, my Lord. I thought that uh, was great, dude. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Last, Airbender. Last Airbender. Last yeah. Airbender. Oh, all that to say, yeah. it's good to see a faithful adaptation. All right, so... There's a lot of things we like about that movie, and there's some things we don't like so much about the movie. So let's talk about some criticisms. Um, for myself, uh, I felt like some of the characters changed sides too quickly. They came to that revelation point real sudden. Like, um, what was the boy romantic interest? What was the boy's name? Hugo? Uh, <laughs> Hugo, yes, thank yeah. you. I could not for the life of me remember that after the movie. So Hugo goes to this meeting with his boss, and I felt like that guy was going to try to use Hugo to kill Alita. Because, like, the way he worded it was he wanted to kill Alita, and he knows the boy is close to Alita. So I'm thinking, oh, he's going to, like, bribe him or control him or brainwash him and use him to con- to kill Alita. But that totally didn't happen. Um, and then Hugo goes down, and he has that big change. Or no, before the scene, he has a big change of heart where he's just like, I'm going to quit everything. And it was just, yeah. I don't know, a little little weird and sudden the other quick side change was jennifer Connolly. yeah she just like randomly put everything at stake you, you feel like she's kind of 
just selfish and materialistic and just wants the stuff from her villainous thing or her, you know, her questionable shady thing she's doing, but she just like gave it all up real fast. Um, and it was just weird. <laughs> like maybe the lack of character development made that weird. If they developed her more, maybe that could have made it more yeah. organic and natural, but it didn't seem yeah. natural to me. Another thing I didn't like was that like the second that Alita comes out of the house, she sees the first boy and she is in love with him. Just like, boom. I'm thinking, I don't know. This is too much of like a subservient, like robot slave girl trope here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just a little like, come on, really? Like it was way too quick. Um, and she's just like head over heels over this boy wants to look back and that's all she can think about. So I had the same, the exact same criticisms and, and that bothered me a little bit. I'm like, why did, why was that love interest so just abrupt and everything like that? Again, yeah, um, it's a nine novel or a nine graphic <laughs> novel st- story. Yeah. So from what I gathered from the fans, they're like the first movie actually co- covers books one through five. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so the the second one is supposed to cover six and seven, and then the oh, last wow. one mm-hmm. is eight and nine. And so okay. then that makes sense. But again, it's 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 like everything on the it's it's everything to do on the marketing on the front end, like preparing you for that. Like you know, I didn't know any of that going in. So yeah, I'm gonna have these criticisms. It's like so so the average viewer doesn't have a clue and has all these criticisms. Yeah. Um but you know, fans of the of the franchise are like, they yeah, understand. yeah, because apparently that 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 death, even in the book, in the book, mm. it, I think it happens over the course of half a book. Oh, wow. it's super fast. Mm. So the fact that they extended it as long as they did in the movie was actually too long, um, but they wanted to make it substantial. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I got that feeling too, where they were they they had a lot of material they had to cram into the movie. So it's a criticism, but it's not like a, a deal breaking criticism where I'm like, I don't like the movie because of this. I'm willing to accept like what you just said, which I didn't fully understand, but it yeah. totally makes sense. Is that they had a lot of stuff they had fixed cram into this one movie. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like that way about Stardust. You ever see that old movie Stardust? Stardust. Oh yeah. It was, was kind of good. <laughs> yeah, it was like good and bad, but I feel like there was so much smashed into that one little movie. It's like how many novels is this movie covering? It just it felt like too much. <laughs> Um, the other thing was the, the father-daughter story, which I like that relationship that they had going. I thought it was um, it was nice and it was it was it was cool. Yeah. But it kind of just fell off the, to the wayside like halfway through the movie or maybe earlier. Um, and Ido has less of a role and she's just off on her own. Now it turns into the more of a romance thing before between her and Hugo. Um, I don't know. I I wish there was a little more fatherly interaction, you know, throughout the movie. Yeah. Um, and like I said earlier, my last my last uh, little complaint is the uncanny valley of her face. So here's a big question, and and this is two questions. First question is, was it necessary <laughs> for her yes. face to be like that? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, and and that question leads me to a bigger question: is if she, if her face is purposely modeled to to be whatever that style is, and the other uh, cyborg and or android that she was fighting with in the war in the past had the same anime looking face? Do all the androids from Mars have that face and or do all the humans on Mars look like that too? And the androids are modeled after the Mars humans. Whoa. (laughs) You just blew your own mind. Do the Martian. (laughs) Whoa, self. (laughs) But you know what I'm saying? Like, do the Martian humans on Mars have anime faces because of like, I don't know, sub sub evolution or whatever, adaptation. Like, it's just a weird thought. Why would they make the Android faces to look like that? I don't know. That is a, that's uh I don't know if you guys seen that show The Expanse. Yes. I've watched the Where, first episode. The yeah, Martians are yeah, different Martians, body types. They're like super tall, like re- really mm-hmm. lanky because of the lack of gravity, which makes yeah. sense, but yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's it's a fish, maybe it's an efficiency thing. Maybe they have all this <laughs> Technology crammed into the eye, so they have to make them bigger. <laughs> yeah, they did. You know, modified. like all these different types. Of, yeah, all these different types of sensors, infrared and yeah. heat, and yeah, the and, Martians are GMO humans. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Good, I didn't, I didn't ponder it, but yeah, it's a good question. Now we're really wanting to see the sequel to see if the Martians look freaky too. <laughs> yeah, those flashbacks are definitely worth a sequel. Oh, gosh. Yeah. A prequel. Wouldn't that be awesome to do a prequel after well, the trilogy? It was 300 years ago, <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> fight, or the, the flashbacks were 300 years old. Oh, I have another criticism you just reminded me of. So, oh, yeah. like you said, the war was 300 years ago, right? 
And she, how did she get to the trash heap? She fell off the tubing, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was 300 years ago. How was she still at the surface in pristine, you know, somewhat pristine condition, her skin at least? (laughs) Yeah. Like, how was she at the surface for Ido to find her? She would have been covered up years ago. Or she was somebody's trophy that finally they threw out with the trash. I don't know. Like, I kind of wish, like, my mind was, like, doing alternate versions of the movie to make it better in my mind. And in my my alternate version of the movie in my head was there was a huge excavator that dug a big pit to get somewhere to move move stuff around. And then he finds her at the bottom of that that hole, you know, like, uncovered. I can't help but think of Wally. When the towers just start to, you know, the towers just, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was that thinking too. <laughs> yeah, they just start term. to fall, fall over and then they just uncover trash from 500 <laughs> years ago or whatever. Yeah, but that, <laughs> totally. that's, that's, yeah, it's a, what's, the, what's that, what's that called? It's um convenient something. I can't remember. Uh, what about you guys? Any other criticisms of anything? Oh, the biggest thing they left open was where did he get the sword from? Because she says you're unworthy of that piece. And I was like, but what? It's definitely a Martian technology. <laughs> yeah. They left that very open ended. And I was like, man, I wish I would have known. Or I agree with pretty much everything you guys have said. Um, I mean, there are some, the, I think the love stories is what, what bothered me too. Um, okay. There is a, a, I guess this is not a criticism, but this is actually kind of cool. I, I thought. <laughs> But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, I thought it was cool that Alita, it's like she was incomplete at the beginning. And then by the end of the movie, she's like this whole complete. Totally remade. Yeah. And Hugo goes backwards. Um, mm, he ends yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like they went like different opposite ways. A little uh, regressed. It's kind of yeah. sad. <laughs> yeah. So um, and it's it's it's. The fact that it was a, a very quick love story and he mm. ends up dying. Um, yeah. Is what, yeah. They, because of the character development that he got, though, you feel for him, you know, like when he dies, mm-hmm. it's actually like impactful, I felt. Yeah. I yeah. didn't. I wanted him to die the moment that he felt that she fell for him. <laughs> like the moment that she fell, I'm like, dude, die. come on, man. It's like <laughs> too soon, man. I'm I'm barely mm-hmm. liking this chick right now. I mean, I I don't I don't want some other dude to jump in into the action yet. So. Um, yeah. From the get go, it was it was very obvious. It was very you knew tr- he was gonna die. Yeah, well, yeah, I knew something yeah. was gonna happen to him. I, I didn't I know was how it was gonna happen. The the whole you know swapping of the body and her connecting yeah. his head to her heart kind oh, of that thing. Was gross. I was, I like, was confused. Whoa. I didn't know what was happening. Like afterwards, I leaned over Nate. I was like, "Did she seriously cut off Hugo's head? He was that's dead gruesome." Yeah. yeah, that's what Nate said. I'm like, "It's still his head. That's gross." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I mean, that like somehow that's like, some skills her- though too. I mean, Alita, where'd she get that? That was she was probably a combat medic too. So to be able to surgically cut him up like that and, <laughs> and connect the blood. So I way overthought this. I I was thinking, okay, <laughs> yeah. she pulled her heart out, and what's on the surface of her skin? Nanobots that can create anything. I'm like, she just made a head out of her nanobot like surface stuff, and it's a fake head. And then I'm like, well, why is it connected to her heart? Why is she like <laughs> hiding it? <laughs> and then, and then uh, it dawned on me, I was like, oh my gosh, that's really Hugo's head. This is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> too far, too far. Yeah. Uh, and then she collects on it. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, so, I need, I, you can't, yeah. Uh, Paulina, any other uh, criticisms, you know, as a story writer, like, or anything that was bad or anything like this, too much cliche? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like the whole. Um, there were certain things, there were certain aspects of it where I thought they were kind of cheesy. Um, uh-huh. You know, like her, you know, being all like, you know, I, none of you are worthy and like, you know, join me and like I'm the hero and like <laughs> all of that stuff. I, I just find it so cheesy, but... Um, <laughs> I don't know. So I guess sometimes it's needed. I felt Hugo was cheesy. Like in the beginning of the scenes, I yeah, I warmed up to him, but I felt yeah. he was kind of a bad actor. I was like, mm, I'm not, I'm not really <laughs> yeah, this guy. I, he felt like he came straight out of Twilight into that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I feel hey. like he didn't fit. Yeah. He didn't fit the skill level with the other characters. I think that yeah, mm. they try making him too um, like the hot guy. You know, the cool <laughs> hot the guy, very <laughs> suave. You know, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I, and I think that the character could have had like a lot more 
depth to it as far as yeah. where he came from and and what. I feel like if he was a little older and more mature, I would have liked him more. I would have. I would have liked yes. the other guy that the guy that that fought her. Um, but he was the one that that hit her when they when she first played uh, the rollerball thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes, with I the see. dreads. Yeah, yeah, with I the dreads. I, I think that character would have been a better love interest huh. um, than Hugo was. I think it was but yeah, Jorge. I think. I yeah, I I think it would have been uh, interesting to see if they didn't like each other in the beginning. Yeah, and then they ended up. Ended yeah, up liking each other. Oh, fan fiction, fan probably fiction. Probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in this fan fiction website. <laughs> yeah. Well, that guy's still alive, so maybe he's still. Yeah, maybe, maybe still, he has a chance. Hey, maybe they'll develop something. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the, the classic. I took my dead friend's yeah, girlfriend. Bond over the loss. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Pearl, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> The continuous villain, I think his name was Amok, A-M-O-K. Oh, man. Casper Van Diem. <laughs> he was so annoying. The big, like, like exos- The big, huge dude? Yeah, I was just like, die already, gosh darn it. For real? <laughs> and then, What's so special about this guy? I don't know. And then in the bar scene when he killed the puppy, I was like, oh, shoot, John Wick's coming. <laughs> dude. Both yes, yes. Yeah, at the same time. The puppy. <laughs> oh, man, that was horrid. That was cringy. That- I was like, come on, really? <laughs> and then she wipes a puppy's blood on her face. Like, yeah. was that necessary? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, the puppy <laughs> thing was a little bit much. I think that was the it only, was. yeah. <laughs> Sad club. We Here we own two puppies. I was like, no. <laughs> the cyborg dogs were funny. The cyborg dogs made me laugh. <laughs> it was it was hilarious because uh, those dogs were like the most well-trained dogs I have ever seen. <laughs> And nice. when they were, they had standings. Um, they had stuffed animals for standings that looked exactly <laughs> oh like them. What? It was hilarious. They yeah, had dog it was hilarious. stand-ins. <laughs> yeah, that is so funny. Yeah, wow, it's was... not right. They, they're cutting that dog short of pay. <laughs> I was like, "Where's my standing?" <laughs> <laughs> I want a stuffed Paulina. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting tired over here. Can you just? <laughs> That's good. That dude is totally like a cowboy aged John Wick because he likes dogs so much. Like that was future John Wick right there. Yeah. <laughs> the- or that was, yeah, that was John Wick. <laughs> John Wick doesn't die. <laughs> How do you guys feel about the whole cyborgism theme of this movie of body part replacement? Like, would you guys replace a body part? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. No my doubt. knee, my left knee specifically. I mean, we're already <laughs> kind of doing it now. Yeah, I I yeah. think that's like that's a. Uh, uh, glimpse into the future i mean obviously a lot more like you know exaggerated but mm-hmm. it's already happening yeah. Well, yeah. The, yeah. the first movie that my wife and i went on a date on back in 1999 was Whoa. bicentennial man oh dude i love that movie <laughs> oh, yes yeah. and apparently bicentennial man was also a ripoff of alita and oh, so but because of the cyborgism about you know do cyborgs have rights and so do you know which is kind of a, a, an underlying subplot in the whole novel series is whether cyborgs, you know, because they're part human and they're mostly mm-hmm. machine, but they're part human. And yeah. so um, that that movie was, I've always loved that movie, uh, especially Robin Williams, Rest in Peace. Um, Have you read the book? Have you read the book? No, no, I haven't. Oh, no. get that book. It's so great. It's way better. Uh, and so that movie touched on a lot of on a lot of political hot topics, um, mm-hmm. from euthanasia to you know to yeah. to to rights of people that you don't consider human yeah. or that are less human. You know things like that. And so cyborgism. <laughs> I mean, at what point do you classify if you're fifty percent less? Yeah, fifty percent of your bodies are are human, and the other half is 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 machine yeah. you know well, what about people are that are human? born without limbs you know are they yeah. are they automatically classified into yeah, that as human yeah so there's a lot of things that you can delve into politically and social uh psychology into it and it's like wow there's 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 the future has a lot to talk about yeah, I, I encourage all of you guys and all the listeners to find the Positronic Man novel. It came out in 93. It's by, by Isaac Asimov. And um, it's, man, it's got so many great uh, just discussions in the book, or rather like psychological ideas and philosophical ideas of hum- what is human, what is life, and why do you deserve rights. Um, yeah. There's this beautiful scene in the, in the book 
I think it's in the movie too, where basically uh, Andrew, which is the the positronic man, he's a full on. He's not even a cyborg. He's a he's a full android. So he's a robot, uh, artificial everything. And he's standing before like the one world government, um, kind of a judicial situation where they're they're voting on whether to give him human rights or not, because um, he's asking for it and he's not a human. Yeah. So in this scene, he basically is pleading his case, and he he talks to the the entire audience of like. And he says, you know, uh, he's, I think he says like 72% of you in this room have artificial organs and robotic body replacement parts. That I designed, the, I think he said. Yeah, that yeah. he made. Because in the they don't have this in the movie, but in the book, um, Andrew goes to the moon for quite a few years. And he just devotes his life to designing like um, synthetic uh, replacement parts for humans. Yeah. You know, he, he's a good robot. He wants to benefit mankind. And so he makes all these, you know, amazing like uh, replacement hearts and, you know, every body part. So yeah, like most of the people in that room are more than fifty percent, you know, synthetic and, and artificial, and it's thanks to him. Yet they won't give him rights to be a human. I just love that <laughs> juxtaposition. It yeah, was great. Yeah. At what point does AI start to create things for humankind that, mm-hmm. or what? I, I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't even. I can't even fathom how how a, a machine could become self aware. But yeah, that's yeah. a huge. Yeah. That's a huge conundrum that you have to. That eventually somebody's going to have to deal with. Uh, yeah. So cyborgism in this movie is is I, I don't think they touch on the political or social aspects mm-hmm. of it as no, much as we're accepted. talking as much as we're talking about it. They're they've almost yeah. like gotten past that part, and yeah. I think they respect everybody. I want to yeah. say uh, I mean the only thing that's different is you know you have the different cartels if I could put them that way. You know you have the elitists and the and the subservience, and then you have the the low middle class or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I think they've gotten past the part of whether or not something's considered human because it looked to me like everybody was expendable, yeah. human or cyborg. So, Paulina, how do you feel about this recent uh, uptick in movies with female lead characters? Well, I think it's, I think it's a nice change. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I hate to say it because I'm, <laughs> I'm not like one of those like, Oh my God. Like when I write my scripts, I don't think about like, I don't make it an effort to, to make every single lead a female. Just, it's just whatever comes out, you know? Um, but I, but I do think that there is a nice change, uh, you know, in the industry making, um, uh, females not the stereotype of what we've seen in the past, you know, they can be, yeah, they can be strong too. They can be um, resourceful and, you know, they can be um, uh, superheroes. When Wonder Woman came mm. out, I got goosebumps, you know, with her. Yeah, that was great. Uh, it was a great movie. I, I enjoyed it. And I and I, I really felt like it was a truly um, empowering movie for women because it was so uh-huh. female led. Like it was yeah. like truly woman at the helm, including like the director was female, like. So would you say, Paulina, that your scripts are just, they're they're just, as the story comes, you, you tell it, you, you don't, you don't specifically, so you're saying you don't specifically cast a woman in the, in a, in a lead position just because you want to cast a woman. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't make it a point. Um, just because I, I, I support equality, (laughs) not like, you know, I don't want to like go off the deep end and like. You know, whatever comes to me, whatever the story is, um, I, you know, just want to make it whatever the story was. Like, I, I don't, I don't, it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to make it a woman because there needs to be more women. And, you know, but, you know, that's just when I write. It's like if, if the character came to my mind as a man, then it's going to say a man. Um, and if it's a woman, it's going to be a woman. But. I think that I do support this trend, though, for Hollywood to emphasize that there are stories out there that are not being told um, that it, you know, emphasizes on women's stories. Um, Mm -hmm. So I I'm happy to see that uh, being uh, developed. Yeah, me too. One, One way to look at the whole this whole discussion is. The, chil- the children right now, um, what are they growing up with? You know, now girls, little girls can grow up watching a movie with a girl as the superhero. Right. And, and that's that's good for kids. 
Um, and also we're expanding, you know, our bounds of nationality, which is also good for kids of, that are not white Americans, you know, to see mm-hmm. someone that looks like them. Like it's so simple, but to see someone that looks like you in a film, um, I saw some videos of, uh, when the black Panther came out, there was a group of, you know, two young boys that were just like, so excited. They were looking at the movie poster and one boy was saying that I'm, I'm him. Another boy was like, Oh, I'm this guy. And, you know, they sure they can relate to, uh, you know, white Avengers, but how much more can they relate to Avengers and characters that look like them, that have the same skin tone? And the same applies to gender is like, I think that's great that women of all ages, not just kids, can relate um, and, and connect and enjoy a character that is more like them than what the status quo has been in Hollywood, which is white males mm-hmm. doing everything. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, and the women, and what do women need in the, in the stereotypical movies? Women need a man to do something for them. And it's just an out of balance. And so now I feel like we're counteracting that balance, which is a good thing. And and we're showing the other side of the story and balancing things out. So, so another theme in this movie is uh, innocence. Um, you know, when she comes to life, she has total memory loss and uh, she's just like a little girl, <laughs> Yeah. which can be a little creepy at first because she's not, <laughs> she's, you know, somewhat of a grown woman. And there was, there was a weird scene. I felt a little awkward where they, when she got the, um, the body upgrade or when she got the berserker body yeah. and then like everything reshaped. Right. And, uh, for she some reason, Ido thought she, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for some reason, Ido thought she was a teenager. And then she's like, Oh, she's a little older than we thought. I'm like, Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Know. That threw me like, for a loop too. The, the line was weird. <laughs> uh, the um, one that the assistant said, was it? The, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. She said it wasn't even Ida. It was, it was her assistant. It's like, it looks like she's a little older than you first thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah that was interesting <laughs> but yeah the innocence uh was there and what do they call it fish out of water when like yeah. someone is on a you know like a captain marvel was a fish out of water story where she comes to earth and you know thor too where they mm-hmm. don't know what is normal on earth mm-hmm. society right so we had a little bit of that with alita um but it was more so her exploring things for the first time like the chocolate scene that was so cute you don't eat chocolate like that. <laughs> That's yeah, every a, time I eat chocolate, I do that. <laughs> if I could just eat chocolate and peanut butter, I'd be set for life. I mean, oh, dude, me too. Yeah. Freaking love peanut butter. All right. I put peanut butter on bananas. <laughs> I put peanut butter on my waffles. What else do I put it on? That's about it. But you put peanut butter on your peanut butter. <laughs> uh, yes. I would put peanut butter on my cereal if I could, but that I don't think On I your what? Peanut butter. Cereal. Oh, I, I have bad. peanut butter cereal, so I guess that, you know. Saves me some time. <laughs> Glad to know there's another peanut butter lover here. One of the things that I that I thought was interesting about the the theme, one of the themes was the the whole caste system theme. Like uh, yeah. you know, like you had this society of uppers and this lowers and the yeah. uh, I'm gonna say it, but you know the deplorables and the expendables <laughs> and and so you had all these people that fit into these uh, these pegs and. Um, and the movie was was really it was really interesting just trying yeah. to figure out who was what and 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 <laughs> as the movie unfolded you started to see different types of people like yeah. like Paulino, um the the troop of people that you were what were they called oh the hunter warriors yeah, yeah. The, the hunter warriors that was a separate caste system cuz that was a brotherhood yeah, that was, was a family mm-hmm. and yeah. so you start to see these these it's 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 a step beyond clicks but not mm-hmm. fully cast. Uh, so I thought that that theme, it was just really interesting. They presented it, they presented it in an interesting sci-fi way, yeah. uh, which I enjoyed. And to go along with the cast system, a theme of the movie is is that the characters want to move up. Well, some of them, they, they're clawing their way to the top and they're trying to find out, like, how can I get there? Well, the most obvious way that they believe, you know, it's, it's a lie, but they believe that if they win the rollerball mm-hmm. tournament, they can go up a level and they can, you know, be one of them up there in the, in the Elysium, you know, the, yeah. the, the, God, the yeah. city of the gods or whatever up there. So um, it turns out to be a lie and, and a sham. But that theme of moving up in caste is interesting because, you know, in here in America, we don't necessarily have a caste system the same way that we have in other parts of the world. We more have, uh, I guess, socioeconomical groups like income separation and poverty and, you know, middle class and upper class yeah. and the elite and things like that. But in the East, um, you know, think places like India and places in Asia, we have like caste system is much more pronounced. Um, you know, you don't even talk to anyone that's, that's in the upper class above you or below you. 
and it, it's it's terrible because people are stuck in these these caste systems and you know f- for those who are religious about it it's all about reincarnation and karma you can't move up unless you're yeah. better in life and if you're in that caste system it's because your past life wasn't good enough so it's it's really a vicious cycle and it's very sad that those countries are stuck in those cycles but um, that's how it is so the caste system is is an interesting theme that we see in some sci-fis and others other sci-fis take it an opposite route like star trek they take more not not so much a dystopian uh track yeah. of the future history but a uh a utopian yeah yeah but utopian yeah. um f- future prediction where people are equal and you know we're all happy and, and chummy and, and nice with each other um so that's kind of the, the flip-flop is that it's everyone equal versus not equal to anyone around you and but but people up in the floating city when they look down and think about people down in iron city you know those people down on the ground are, are worthless they're not as valuable and you know maybe even if you want to get extreme they may not even see them as you know fully human so mm-hmm. um, hopefully we'll get to explore more of that in the next move in the in the rest of the trilogy is seeing what is it like up in that city what do those people do yeah and you know how do they get there and and it'll be it'll be cool the daughter i thought that that could have been developed a little bit more with mm-hmm. jennifer connelly's yeah. um character that's that's where i find like the I feel like she's very disconnected um, from them, which, which mm. in a way she she should be because she kind of went her different way. But I didn't feel her pain. A mother losing a daughter, there should have been more pain, and I didn't get that. Yeah, so you seemed like she was doing pretty good. Yeah, considering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's one of the things that bother me with with her character. But but I feel like she she feels like she's moved on and healed from it mostly, and she's done grieving. But Ido is not. He hasn't let go of the fact that Alita's dead, mm-hmm. and so that's why he names you know the cyborg girl Alita. Yeah, that he's still yeah. holding on. So there's that that theme of loss there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was weird to me that he named her his daughter Dead without daughter. The, again without the backstory and without knowing that him and uh jennifer connelly's character were were a, were a thing i was like wait oh they oh they had a daughter together so it was a it <laughs> yeah. was a lot of yeah. retrospective putting pieces together i'm like oh okay i get it now oh, okay so yeah i think i think um like the confrontation didn't denote like like what paulina's saying didn't denote the loss the, the gravity of the loss mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yeah, she's over it, but is a mom ever really over it? No. I mean, right. yeah. I don't I don't think a mom would be. Interesting side note, in the manga, the name Alita comes from Dr. Ito's cat. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, I did he like name this the direction? Did he kind did he name the cat after the daughter or was oh there never gosh. a daughter? He's really uncreative with names, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just, everything in his OCD. life is yeah, everything in his life has been named Alita. Alita. <laughs> Overall, what do you guys think about this universe that um, James Cameron is painting for us for the Alita franchise? I'm hoping to see some more of the backstory of of the Battle of Mars or the the, the battles, yeah. the, the flashbacks that we saw. Yeah, I would like to see more of that. That's that's. <laughs> I want to know who's the bad guy in the war. Like, was Earth wrong or was Mars wrong? Like, who is? Why are they fighting, I guess? War is wrong. True. Yeah. Every, there's always um, bad guys on both sides. Yeah. But. Capitalists versus. <laughs> I, I mean. Was, was Mars socialist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the cat- catalyst that, that kicked everything off? Was it was it a, a cyborg is that. Um, maybe 300 years ago, it was. Yeah, maybe 300 years ago is a hot topic. Like, yeah. all the Martians are cyborgizing themselves and Earth isn't quite there yet. Yeah, and they're like, "You guys need to not do that." Blah, we're gonna shoot missiles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'd like to see more of that. I want to know why didn't Zalem fall? It's still there. Was it like? Was there an insider? You know, am I keeping them afloat, or were they just not attacked by Mars, or what? Maybe mm-hmm. they had a special up. Maybe uh, maybe Nova knew something was able to, to save them from you know the ninety nines military team taking them out. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I also like to see some more of that back backstory. What about this? On the Martian ship in the water, what about the other nine berserker bodies that were not present? Oh. There's only one left for Alita, uh, which makes me wonder, was it really her body and why was it left? Or where, the, where are the other ones, basically? Mm, maybe there's yeah. other, maybe she'll find other berserkers that are, you know, hiding on the down low for the last 300 years. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then elsewhere. they see her and then they get inspired and join the cause kind of thing. Or 
they or she's sympathetic Nova. to the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe should, maybe there's more to Nova than we expect. Although that was freaky when Jennifer Connelly's body parts were in those jars. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> So Noah's doing some freaky deaky stuff up there with some human body parts. I don't know what he's doing. I want to know more about like Nova and the doctor. So I'm more interested about the backstory, like the 300 years backwards. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm looking forward to the most. I know that the story must go on, but I think some backstory first will be more appreciated. Yeah, that, that battle on the moon was <laughs> so <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> that's a, that's a nightmare fighting on the moon. Oh my, you just one kick and you're, you're out in space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One good cyborg kick, that is. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, fingers crossed that we see a sequel in, in no less than uh, two mm. years from now. <laughs> yeah. But James Cameron's going to have his plate full with all the Avatar movies coming out soon. Um, yeah. When's the next one come out? Is it 21? Or? Yeah, I think 21. Oh, sheesh. That is a while. And there's like two more after that. Because <laughs> he's working on Yeah, it's reboot. supposed to be a five-parter. We would love to hear your thoughts on Battle Angel Alita, so do not be shy. You can email us or you can comment on any of our social media posts uh, for this episode. And uh, yeah, let us know what you thought about the movie. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Uh, maybe a little bit of both. So write us at tvvpodcast at gmail.com. And we will see you next week. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app. You can also find our previous episodes there and listen whenever you want. We love to hear from our listeners, so if you have any comments or suggestions for future episodes, you can reach us at tvvpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and have a great week. He wanted to do a sequel to Titanic. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no. The Britannica. No, I'm just <laughs> Titanic <laughs> rises. Yeah. Resurrection. Titanic resurrection. <laughs> <laughs>